Jennifer, let's start with you. Sure. What we know, we knew earlier, as I recall, that Spotify had made a complaint to the commission saying mm -hmm. it's not fair because Apple's basically charging us a fair amount of money for us to get to our audience through the Apple app. And now we hear that the European Commission may actually start the investigation? Yeah, that's right. I mean, this is what news is reporting, um, that the European Commission has looked at this complaint, they've talked to rivals, they've gone out there and done a little work to see if these allegations may have merit and that they may open a formal investigation into it. Understanding that that doesn't mean that there is actually wrongdoing and that they will determine that there's wrongdoing, but they will look into it and they'll probe this issue, look at the data, look at what exactly Spotify is doing, how it might be harming consumers, and what their you know legitimate business justifications, if there are any, for, for doing what they're doing. So only Apple invested in creating this platform uh, and they charge people sort of even stay, Stephen for use of the platform. What's so unfair about them saying okay we'd like to charge you the same amount Spotify? Yeah. So it wouldn't be unfair if all Apple was doing was charging Spotify for the use of its platform. But it is in Spotify's words it's taxing it 30 percent and also there are related complaints that Apple is um, preventing it from giving information to its users about how to upgrade their um, their streaming music and other ways in which Apple, which is both the referee and the player, is using its referee elbow um, to outcompete Spotify. And of course, it's very important that Apple Music is a very direct and important competitor of Spotify. So this is the, uh, the paradigm that the European Union is very concerned about. You have these huge firms, the big tech firms, uh, they have a lot of power and they are the gatekeeper and they compete with rivals on their platforms. So we have gatekeepers here in the United States as well uh, in right. various places including the media for example. We've seen it in cable television for example. How much power do you have to have in order to come afoul of competition or antitrust authorities Jennifer and is it a different level of power in the European Union than it is in the United States? You know, it's different not just in terms of level of power, but, but there are many different aspects to how the unilateral conduct by, by a powerful entity might be looked at by the EU and the U.S. And in particular in the U.S., for instance, you know, why Spotify didn't sue Apple in the U.S. is that our laws, our court precedent has really limited the kind of conduct that's considered illegal and crosses the line even by a really powerful company. Um, uh, uh, for you know a competitor that's making a claim that feels it's been disadvantaged it is very difficult to make that claim under our laws as they sit today and as they've been interpreted in the EU it's quite different there's a lot more flexibility under the law and they approach it a little bit differently and they're definitely more sympathetic to claims that rivals are being pushed out or discriminated against and don't have sort of a free and open marketplace so Eleanor going back in history in the United States uh, the basic thing that uh, courts were trying to protect us against was paying too much money uh, increasing the price to consumers. A lot of these large tech companies are doing exactly the opposite. It's getting cheaper and cheaper and cheaper. Do the antitrust laws really apply effectively in that world, which is basically deflationary, not inflationary? So first let me say when you go back in U.S. antitrust law, it wasn't about only raising prices to consumers. It was about excluding rivals unfairly. And that was a huge thread if you look at the history of U.S. But we gave that up in favor of a notion of efficiency, which leans heavily in favor of incumbents and dominant firms as the way the courts apply the rules. Uh, so. That is one point that a lot of the dominant tech firms are using exclusionary practices to keep the competition away from them. So the second is about the pricing. I mean, this is a very important point that the firm's models are low prices. So here this, this sits right into what Jennifer was saying. Um, the U.S. has a model that at least a lot of people will say requires, first of all, to show monopoly power, which that means raising prices, having the ability to raise price. And then you look at these cases and they're not high price cases. And you want consumers to be able to get the benefit of low prices. So here's where EU law is more flexible. EU law is not against low prices, but it's against exclusionary practices and, and disadvantaging your competitors because you have power over them. So as you point out, if you go back in history, you have to go back to like Brandeis or something, you, you, the antitrust laws were different. But it's been a good long time now since we've really taken that approach to antitrust law in this country. It's been much more economics driven, perhaps Chicago school economics driven. Yes. As a practical matter, could that be changed in this country without a change in the legislation? Because you can't just go into court and say we want you to change your mind, court. 
Right. So it would be very difficult to bring these lawsuits to call big tech to account under our Sherman Act. That's our basic antitrust statute. And that can't be just changed overnight because the court has dug in and is very, very favorable to freedom of even dominant firms to do what they want, especially if it's low pricing. But I think that our Federal Trade Commission is really well situated to take on issues where consumers are harmed. Um, consumers are harmed by exclusionary practices. Consumers are harmed because companies maybe like Spotify aren't getting the fair chance to compete on the merits and get their products out on the merits. And other firms seeing the power of the platforms and how they're using it won't even try. Uh, so EU is not against low prices. And we shouldn't be. <laughs> but, but if Spotify came in the United States to the FTC and said that, I imagine that Apple would say, wait a second, Spotify hasn't any trouble at all getting subscribers in the United States. I mean, it is much bigger, actually, than Apple is. I think that's exactly the issue. So Eleanor was saying, FTC does have dis discretion to bring a Section 5 case. In fact, they just finished a lawsuit against Qualcomm for monopolistic practices. But I think they'd look at the Spotify situation and say, wait a minute, you know, we just don't think this is going to go anywhere in court. First of all, Spotify's bigger than Apple. Yeah. In the subscriptions, music streaming, yeah. as you pointed out, they're bigger. And secondly, under our laws, you really have to show that the competitor's been foreclosed or substantially yeah. foreclosed. And Apple hasn't kicked Spotify out of the App Store. Right. Apple hasn't said uh, people can't go into your website and subscribe through your website. They haven't foreclosed them from the market. No. And I think that this case wouldn't go anywhere in the U.S. 